maybe. All right, man, it's that time. It is 9 o'clock. Hello, and welcome to U.S. Rugby Happy Hour Live. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, Happy Hour Live brings you interviews with some of the biggest names in the USA or U.S. rugby scene, and tonight is no different. Uh, we have Dallas Jackals rookie Sam Gola and San Diego Legion wing Nate Augsburger joining us, so stay tuned. If you're not already following us, please do so at Eagles Overseas and Rugby Morning to get updates on future shows and news about USA Rugby, Major League Rugby, and more. I am Bill Baker of Eagles Overseas, and with me is Rugby Morning's John Fitzpatrick. Hey, Fitzy. Hey, Bill. What's going on? Uh, not too much. You know, let's... Uh, it was a big event tonight, man. There's something going on in uh, South Beach area. Did you uh, catch wind of that? I, I, yeah, the Miami Sharks were announcing their first player signing and introduced their GM. Exciting things for MLR in 2024. Yeah, I was tuning in uh, to their live show for a little bit. Uh, it looks like they have a nice showing. It looks like a lot of the ownership group is there. And I think that's – no, that's not Mark Cuban. Never mind. I think we should check in, see how it's going. Yep, nothing going on still. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there was there was a, a it was actually it looked like it was pretty well done they had an announcer um all in spanish um which makes probably makes pretty good sense i mean this uh, ownership group is mostly what argentinian it sounds like is that the is that what you're catching yeah i think so yeah 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 <laughs> oh wait i think we have some news here hold on <laughs> nope, nothing. Okay, <laughs> put that it sounds up. like a it sounds like a laugh track. Or something. <laughs> it does. That's our that's our laugh track. Uh, <laughs> uh, but besides that, a couple things we should talk about real quick. Um, uh, World Rugby. Have you heard about the Accelerate program? Much of that at all? I have. Yeah. So yeah, you know, I think it's an awesome idea. But what's interesting to me isn't isn't World Rugby out of Dublin? It is. Yeah, and yeah. this is about the women's program. And you heard what happened a week or two ago with someone high up in, in the organization Ireland Rugby said about women's rugby. So I, did. Uh, I, I sucked. And, uh, um, you know, obviously we have a connection with USA Rugby with the women's head coach there. And, um, you know, I wish him the best, Greg McWilliams. Mc Williams. Uh, but I love this Accelerate program. It just seems odd coming out of Dublin. And, um, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with the message. I just, it's just bad timing, I guess. But um, hopefully this helps at the very least. Um, and I've been speaking of Ireland. Uh, it looks like we may not lose another Hawaiian-born rugby player. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Stavini, I'm going to say Stavini, uh, Lombard is returning to the States, signing with Chicago Hounds. Any idea? Have you heard anything about when he's going to start with the club? Or is he already there? My guess is he'll be in the match day 23 next weekend. Right away. Next oh, round. So not Chicago's this, on a bye. Oh, they're on a bye, yeah, yeah. Chicago's on a bye this round. Yeah. Oh, so good to get him in there. And yeah. then uh, a couple of weeks of training at least, and, and get him in. Yeah, it's he's a, he's a big kid, another big hooker. It's just, I think America puts out some big hookers, right? <laughs> they sure do. They sure do. <laughs> talking talking rugby, Fitzy, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my son is supposed to be asleep, and he just came down here. Like, um... <laughs> good, good timing. Uh, you know, hey, one he has other... a flashlight right now. What are you? Oh, okay, hold on. <laughs> uh, while he's dealing with that, one other thing about Miami news. Uh, we've already had confirmation of this. Next week on this show, one of our guests will be Miami CEO Mark Winokur. Um, so tune in for that next week, if whoever's listening right now. And if also, just a reminder, this show is being recorded and will be released as a podcast. And as we get into this more, uh, we are streaming live to Facebook and YouTube. If you are listening in on those platforms, go ahead and you can send us a DM. You can enter in the chat there, ask a question of our guest or myself or Fitzy. Uh, if you want to ask a live question, come on to the show. You need to join us on the Twitter app, um, Twitter Spaces. If you follow the link in Twitter, you'll see all the posts from us in Rugby Morning, Eagles Overseas. It will bring you right to this show, and you can actually come up here and ask a question of our guests and us. Uh, it's really cool. It's it's a unique um, uh, a unique show here in the States. It's not really uh, – every so often there's one-offs here and there, uh, but we do this almost every Wednesday um, with guests like tonight. Um, and Fitz, I think we should get it right into it. Our first guest is here, uh, former Bear, now rookie Jackal. Let's all welcome Dallas Lock, Sam Gola. Hey, Sam, how are you? I'm doing good. That's Thanks for having good. me. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. thanks, man. I didn't mess that name up again, did I? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was good. It was good. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> that means you did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Sam, how are you holding up, man? How's the body holding up? How's It's been over a half of your first MLR season. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I mean, I take recovery almost, I mean, as serious, if not more serious than anything else. So, you know, um, but body's doing well. Um, I put on a decent amount of weight before coming here. So that mm-hmm. also helped out a lot. <laughs> not like, not like Texas barbecue weight, right? <laughs> no, good weight. Good weight. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. and, and, I, and I ask you about how you're holding up too, because um, looking at stats and major rugby, you're fourth in the league in tackles, you know, you're trailing Adrian uh, Boyson, who's number one in the league. Um, so obviously you're getting a lot of contact, you know, do you, is that something you love the big hits or you prefer maybe scoring some tries, you know, jackling for the ball in a breakdown? Uh, yeah, I mean, I definitely say tackling is my favorite or just like the physical aspect of the sport, you know, enjoying the, the stuff that most people don't enjoy. So (laughs) yeah, I'd say tackling. And then, um, me and Adrian are, I enjoy, you know, just trailing him a little bit. It always keeps him on his toes. So as teammates, um, that's also been a really, really fun part of the season so far. So Sam, you, you came from, right? You came from a top flight college rugby program like Cal and, you know, it prepared you to, to play at a high level, but have you been surprised by the speed or maybe level of play in MLR? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> it's night and day, you know, uh, again, Cal taught me a lot about, you know, professionalism, uh, again, worked very hard there, you know, being, on time, working hard, being accountable, that kind of stuff. Um, and then again, a, obviously a great uh, college rugby program there. Um, but again, as far as like, you know, MLR, prof- like a professional league, you got guys coming from overseas with years and years of experience, um, super rugby, top 14, premier. I mean, the list goes on. So yeah, completely different ball game. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> It's it, 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 what was like the first moment for you, Sam, like uh, coming in, not just training, whatever, let's say maybe even the first match this year where you kind of like, maybe you had to stop for a second and take a breath and go, okay, I got this. Oh yeah. I mean, I think like the realization point was I would like lined up at flanker in a scrum. I just looked in front of me. It was Danny Barrett, you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, golden bear right there. You know, yeah. the coaches that Cal spoke, I mean, just, very highly of him i mean who doesn't um so that was definitely like a big moment right there uh and then you know i remember like in our preseason match against nola you know i was just setting up in the line out defending you know cam dolan you know that was also pretty <laughs> cool as well um but yeah stuff like that but again you know i mean i feel like you can't you can't think about that stuff too much you really can't i mean you don't have time for it so uh, i took the one two seconds to hold it in and then I let it go. And then that's kind of just how you got to move forward, I guess, as a new player. Yeah. And, and looking back at when I played and Fitzy, don't worry, I won't bring up the club or anything like that. Um, they were, Sam, you know, he does this, he does this every show. He it, always brings up the fact that, that he used to play. So. I used to, just so you know, it's just, this show's about me. It has nothing to do with Sam or, <laughs> so with that said, uh, thanks man. Um, like it wasn't until I got my first hit that I was like, okay, let's go. Let's get in this. It felt good. But you know, speaking about hits again and tackles, you know, uh, let's talk about this league so far. Was there somebody you hit where you just needed to take a moment to shake it off because it was just just a hard body or just the uh, uh, you know forcing the contact into you when you hit him? I mean, I'd say like, uh, I mean, not like someone like specific. Yeah. Um, if I'm being honest, I mean, I remember. I think it was after. But definitely, it was the first game I had against Houston, first league game. I think I made like 19 or 20 tackles that game. <laughs> and uh, after that game, I like stood up and I was in the locker and I was, I went up to talk to my parents and I was like, whoa, like this is, <laughs> this is a lot. And then um, I met up with Christian Dyer uh, in the hallway after an old teammate of mine. And he was like, how's, how's it feel? And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you know exactly what I'm feeling right now. <laughs> he's like, yep. Um, yeah. There's not like an, a specific name uh, off the top of my head. Uh yeah, I can't I can't put like a specific name on it, but um yeah, definitely 
definitely a lot of contact that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's jump it back let's jump back a bit to the draft which isn't that long ago obviously and then what we want to get into dallas it was specific about the season stuff first but let's just jump back a second uh first overall pick in the draft uh what is, was it a surprise to hear your name at all or have you already had conversations with dallas um that you were going to be number one um I had conversations with Nola. I mean, I had a conversation with a lot of teams. Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't really know. I also like part of me didn't understand the draft super well until like very end. Um, I was like teetering on whether or not I should, you know, do some more school and work for a year after college. I mean, I just graduated from Cal Berkeley. So that was a really tough decision to make for me. Spent a lot of time on my degree uh and then then join the mlr like after a year uh sign with like a team of my choice almost yeah uh and then you know i was kind of just like convinced by you know friends family um uh my advisors over at afa they helped me out you know they were just like look like if you go in the draft like we think you'll go pretty high i didn't know i was going to dallas until two days before the draft um they fly out the top three guys so I knew I like they called, gave me a call. They're like, "Yep, yeah, you're gonna hop on a flight tomorrow. I'm coming out to Austin." <laughs> and it was the GM. It was Santi uh, from Dallas, and then he just was just like, "Yep, yeah, we're gonna take number one." Nice. And then, um, but yeah, I didn't really know much. <laughs> I know there was like <laughs> some articles published about like, oh, projected number one, that kind of stuff. And then, uh, like, I came. I was like up for player of the year. Um, I didn't know if some of those guys were graduating or not. So I really didn't know, honestly, until like very, very close to the end. Sam, I did a um, 2022 MLR mock draft last year, full draft, all three rounds. I selected where every guy was going to go. I got two picks right. I got, <laughs> I got your pick right. I got your pick right and someone else's right. So I think like it was, I think everyone got your pick right because it was almost like a, a sure thing there. Uh, it's hard to believe because you mentioned Danny Baird, you mentioned, mentioned Christian Dyer, you know, two Cal guys, but it's hard to believe you were the first player dra- drafted out of Cal. I mean, how is that even possible? Man, I, I mean, mean MLR is young, but go ahead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, again, Cal is a, a phenomenal institution. So uh, a lot of people need to take that into consideration because um, I was even considering it as well, you know. Um, great degree, great connections, great, you know, career opportunities as far as that goes. Um, and so that's what happens with a lot of guys, you know, Cal, the Cal rugby team, like really pushes excellence off the field. So every single player, you know, they're pushing economic degrees. The business administration at Cal is unbelievable. And so a lot of guys just go right into very good jobs after college. So, coming straight to go play in the MLR is, um, you know, it's not, it's not common. And then um, again, with COVID, the very, you know, like new part of the season. And then um, on top of that, the last minute, there's like been a lot of new changes as as far as like signing as like a free agent or like choosing your team almost. Cause I know, you know, you had Troy, Nick Mearsham, Sam Cassano, Jack Ascaro, all guys who like, you know, signed as free agents never did went to the draft. So um, part of me was going to do that. And then, you know, I was like, no, I'll just en- t- enter the draft. Um, I think it'll be good for, you know, college rugby players, uh, USA rugby promoting MLR. Um, I think what's going on is amazing. I think it's growing. And I think this is a great opportunity for, you know, college rugby players, you know, take that step forward towards going pro. Um, but that's kind of why, I mean, it's just a lot of it's cause Cal is just a great college, you know? <laughs> and, uh, again, um, I'll be honest, it was on my mind too. You know, I had the discussion with my parents, uh, friends, you know, um, I worked really hard for that degree too. So, you know, a lot of me wishes I could still do some work with it as well. Um, I'm trying as well, but at the same time, you know, I love rugby too much. <laughs> <laughs> well, so yeah, speaking of that, you know, you played flanker and lock in college and now you've, you've played lock and, and flanker for, for Dallas. Yep. Do you have a preference there on, on what position? You pre- so, well, I, I'd definitely say this season so far, I'm more comfortable as far as our game plan goes at lock, just because I've played more games, but, um, 
I, God, I love flanker. I really do. You know, it's fun. <laughs> it's, uh, um, I'm not as tired out of the scrums. That's for sure. Um, you know, I get to hang out on the edge. I'll get a little more running room. Uh, I played sevens at Cal for five years. So um, definitely have like, you know, some ball carrying, like an open space, I'd say. Uh, but I feel like right now, as far as our like team goes, as far as like the cohesion, um, me and Lucas were very close as locks go. We, I mean, we live together. And then um, my prop, Juan Pablo, I mean, I'm always on the right side. And uh, I'm just, you know, very bonded with him as well. So I think <laughs> I prefer lock as far as like right now goes, you know, just because how the team is working and, you know, very young, new team. Uh, so there's still a lot to work to be done, but I'd say like right now, I'd prefer just be at number four or five right now. Uh, listeners, just a reminder that, um, this is obviously a live show and love to have you come up here and ask questions. So anyone here on Twitter spaces, uh, you can request to do so from the bottom left of the app and we'll get you up here as soon as possible. Come up and ask Sam a question or Fitzy and I, if you'd like, and if you are listening in on Facebook live or YouTube live, Go ahead and drop a message or a question in those chats as well. We'll get you up here and get them on air. Uh, let's talk about Cal teammates again. Let's talk about the draft there. Uh, yeah, your Cal teammate, Seth Purdy, also drafted yep. by Atlanta. Not quite getting the minutes he probably would want yet, let's say. Um, mm-hmm. But you travel to Atlanta in a month. Hopefully Seth plays in that match. If so, do you look forward to maybe lowering a shoulder or making a run at the centers? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I talk about it with him every day. You know? Oh, good. He's my best friend, so, uh, I mean, I lived with him four of the five years I went to Cal, you know, so definitely, you know, probably one of my closest friends ever. I would absolutely love to just fold him, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I hope I hope he gets in at center. Um, yeah, so definitely, that's that's a dream of mine, actually. <laughs> well, you all heard it first, so if something, something happens that match, he called it, <laughs> we'll work it out. Uh, it'll it, as we transition into uh, the jackals here, um, and, and and talking about the draft still. You know, was there ever any? And, I'm, and I apologize if I'm coming across with this in the wrong way, but was there ever any worry about coming into this program, considering the kind of year they had last year? Not just the windless season, whatever, but everything else that happened. You know, uh, uh, which is probably a no, I'm assuming. But you know, with that said, what was the message from the coaches um, as they drafted you? So they didn't actually have um, a head coach signed at the time. Oh, yeah. um, they they had Kuka like up in the air. They were talking to him, mm-hmm. um, and then they had like Mario and Will, like they they had all of them like in the air. They haven't really landed on it. Um, so I obviously yes, you know, yeah. oh and sixteen, you know, <laughs> <laughs> obviously. I mean, to say I wasn't thinking about it would be lying, you know, definitely was thinking about it. Definitely was on my mind Mm -hmm. um, as far as that goes. Um, But one good thing is, you know, uh, it was just a great opportunity. You know, I talked to a lot of people about it. Own 16, you know, if I did happen to play well, you know, maybe I'd stand out, maybe I'd get more playing Mm -hmm. time. Um, That is just more experience for me. And then on top of that, like once they signed the coaches, you know, Augustine Kuka, he is basically like my type of player, almost lock some loose forward moves around the pitch, play in Italy. Great for my development as a player. Then you have Mario, one of the best scrum coaches in the world. You know, he is just elevated my game to a whole entire new level. Um, and, you know, he has a lot of similar attributes as Clark. So it was really easy for me to you know move into there and like be coachable and like learn a lot more but again yeah definitely at the start I was a little worried (laughs) not worried I'd say but you know just you know parts of me were skeptical about like how the organization would go especially coming from Cal it's just you know it's run like a tight ship there um right very very professional over there so you know um yeah definitely well I mean Um, we Fans have definitely seen the level of play increase with Dallas. And, of course, you guys got your first franchise win over Toronto on April 1st and obviously been very competitive in matches uh, this season. Most recently, almost knocking off, going toe-to-toe, really, with the best team in MLR, at least record-wise, San Diego Legion this past weekend. What's what's really the, the – you talked a little bit about the team. What's kind of the team culture like in, in Dallas at the moment? Uh, man, it's it's great. 
you know, you got a lot of guys who uh, we really just want to like win more, you know, <laughs> uh, and we're doing everything we can. I mean, we train hard and it's really difficult to like be a losing team and show up every day and like still work a hundred percent, you know, put the forefront effort. I got to give credit to, you know, our captain Hedo. He does a great job, you know, pushing the boys. Um, he's our number six. And then, you know, just like the leaders of the team. Um, again, the culture is great. Mm -hmm. We are struggling to finish, I'd say, especially in the last 10 minutes. Again, that happens with new teams. Um, and especially losing teams, you know, teams that have like the skill and the talent to win and just like right at the end, you know, there's just some aspect of like believing. And I know that everyone on the team believes we can win, but it's just that, you know, it's that reputation that like oversees us so far in the MLR and, um, it's definitely been tough, but one thing I will say is, you know, everyone on this team is like willing to put all the work in. And I haven't really seen anyone, you know, step away from that, not work hard. You know, we all push each other every single day. And you can see that. I mean, 10-9 New England, a try down from Utah, three points off from Chicago, basically toe-to-toe -to -toe with um, San Diego until I dropped that kickoff. <laughs> uh, you know, but um, yeah. And then, like, even Houston, too, tied up until the last, like, what, five minutes? So, um we're a good team. We're a really good team. We just need to focus on that last 10 and close out. Um, and that's what experienced teams do. Um, and we need to, we need to adopt those, those traits. Fitzy, um, scratch that question about him dropping that kickoff. Don't ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> Don't uh, worry. I I've accepted and moved on. You know? <laughs> uh, so yeah. let, let's jump back to the first time you guys played San Diego of a 22 to nothing loss. That seemed to be after that match. It seemed something happened in the the team culture or the team training or whatever, where it just changed. It seemed like now you, you know, something happened where you clicked together or whatever better, and then you said, "Listen, no, 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 we're a good team. We're going to start competing." Because after that, every match has been you know competitive, and you're in it. And like you said, it's just finishing the games has been a problem so far. So other than that, I mean, it, it, has there been a difference in place since the beginning of the season? Is just is also more confidence, more time together. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's confidence um, with each other. I mean, nothing, I don't think anything fuels the team more than a shutout loss, mm -hmm. you know. 22-0, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, that game was tough. Uh, we came so close. We had opportunities to kick for points. We were right on the try line one time, uh, just dropping balls. I mean, it was just, like, really tiny mistakes that just led into, like, you know, a 22-0 loss. Um, but the culture definitely changed. I think it's also been a consistent buildup throughout the season. You know, um, it's been gradual, but I definitely think, yeah, since San Diego, um, that was definitely our, the worst loss, but I think really, you know, our toughest defeat was probably Chicago. Um, I think that really definitely hit the switch for us more. Um, cause we were just so close right there and everyone was just like, livid you know <laughs> like it, was, it was it wasn't it was not a happy happy like plane ride home after that so uh but yeah you know loss loss fuels you and it's more about like you know how you react to it you know you don't want to sulk and you know point fingers and blame and that kind of stuff you need to own up to your mistakes accept them figure out what you did wrong um study prepare that builds confidence it's not going to be you know getting in each other's heads, that kind of stuff, being, having a negative attitude. And, you know, that's what we got to do. Sam, it, uh, everyone notices that um, there's, there's definitely a very influential Argentine influence there in, in Dallas. Have you yourself become more fluent in Spanish? Have you been forced to? <laughs> uh, un poquito, you know, just a little <laughs> bit. You know, uh, I live with an Argentinian, uh, Lucas, and then, um, yeah. Great. I mean, basically what we've discussed as the season goes on is we need to, you know, blend our cultures a lot more. So um, that's what we do. You know, I've adopted a lot of Argentinian culture. I eat dinner a little bit later now, you know, I have my tea, uh, you know, I lots of like big gatherings and barbecues, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, 
a lot more, you know, closeness, um, especially in like the huddles. There's like, there's a form of respect when someone's speaking, you got to hmm. keep your eyes on them. You're closer. Um, but yeah, no, as far as my Spanish goes, it's getting there, you know, <laughs> um, it's getting there. I'm, I'm really bad at it. You know, I dropped out of Spanish really early and I feel like when you're a kid, that's the best time to learn. Uh, yeah. so, you know, it's, it's been an uphill battle. But I'm, wait, wait, I'm, Fitz, I'm before you go on, let's, let's check in on uh, Miami Sharks show. Nope. Just music. I was hoping I had their <laughs> announcer there and, and Sam can translate for us, but, uh, uh, he's, she's not speaking. Okay. <laughs> Well, well, so, 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 Sam, on the field, you've got you've got Spanish, English. I'm sure there. How, how many languages are being spoken, shouted on the field at a typical Dallas Jackals match? Uh, I mean, I feel like anyone who's played us could attest it's a lot of Spanish. You know, yeah. um, especially when players get frustrated, they'll just uh-huh. speak it. You know, they'll just they'll just blurt out. You know, Spanish. <laughs> a lot of the time, I mean. Uh, but, you know, when it comes time to, you know, really, you know, direct traffic, um, English needs to be spoken, especially for everyone on the field. But, uh, yeah, no, lots of Spanish. Um, sometimes, you know, you got the the Southeast, the South Africans, you know, <laughs> speaking as well. But there's only like one or two guys. So it's mostly just English and Spanish. <laughs> yeah. Bill, right. Bill, before, Bill, yeah, before we jump to the next question, I you're talking about Dallas, you're talking about Argent. Argentina and barbecues. You mentioned one or two South Africans on the oh. squad. Have you had monkey gland sauce yet? I have not had monkey gland sauce. No, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we should get one of our listeners up to tell us about it, um, but maybe not. <laughs> I don't want to force them. <laughs> do we? Do it's, we remember what it is? Yeah, it's like it's a it's like a barbecue sauce. It's originated in. Yeah. Peter DeHaas, who's listening, can probably educate us a little bit more on. I've never tried it, but apparently it's good. Right, and I, I, ran, oh. I ran into Gary Gold also at a match last year, and he he just glowed up. He lit up when I mentioned that to him. He's like, "How do you know about that?" I, like, I don't know. Because <laughs> we're worldly. <laughs> we're this oh, show. <laughs> it's uh, monkey gland sauce. Yeah. yeah ask yeah. one of your teammates about it. Yeah. Okay. I'll ask. I'll ask. I'll ask. Uh, uh, listeners, we got just a few more minutes left uh, with Sam coming up. Uh, ask a question. You can do so by requesting in the bottom left. Um, and love to have you ask questions. So let's talk about some the more Argentinians. Uh, Sam just added Tomas uh, Cobia. I think it's how you say his name. Uh, not to be confused with the Argentinian scrum half Tomas Cabelli, who just signed with the Miami Sharks. So they just announced him as their first signing. So two right there. Um, it's got to be a promising sign from the team management coaches. No one's giving up, right? We're adding more players, um, but it seems like you're one or two quality players away from maybe putting together uh, more wins. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I personally think right now we have exactly what we need to win. Um, more depth, more talent, obviously, is going to bring us closer. Right. Um, again, it would be great to have, you know, I mean, I'm sure he's a phenomenal player. I mean, the, his experience is unmatched. Um, and so having him on the team is just obviously going to bring, you know, another level of experience. Mm-hmm. But again, um, at the same time, we, as as a team, can't be like, oh, we got this one experienced guy. Right. Now we can win, you know, when we should have won a lot of previous games. So as much as I agree with you at the same time, you know, yeah, we, we could have won more games this season. Um, so, uh yeah, no, hopefully – I'm sure he's a great player, and hopefully he makes a big impact. Sam, I want to talk a little bit about um, Choctaw Stadium, right? It's the yeah. former home of the Texas Rangers in Arlington there, which is where you were born, correct, Arlington, I think? Yeah, that is correct. I was, I was born in Arlington, wow. yeah. Nice, nice. Wikipedia. Yeah, uh, wow. so <laughs> That's where I get most of my research from. So. But so – it's a, it's a big stadium, right? So it's hard to tell on TV what the crowds are like. But tell us about the fan base. Maybe how into the game uh, is the crowd? I mean, you, it, it sounds pretty good, at least on the broadcast. Yeah, so the stadium is huge. I mean, I think it's 40,000 people can fit there. I know that they fill up every single box every game. So, like, the boxes are all full, and you can't really see any of the people in there, but they're full. You know, you got lots of people, you know, having little parties in there. And then we have, like, the built stands. Um, I think our fan base is great, you know. God bless them, <laughs> especially from last season. And, you know, uh, 
tough one still this year. Um, you know, managing to show up to every single one of our games, um, continue to provide support. I mean, we owe them, you know, more than what we've given so far. So, um, they're great fans, great supporters. Um, all they do is support us, you know, even when we're down. Uh, so yeah, I love them. They're great. Sam, I got to ask. Um, so, as you know, USA men's Eagles missed out on qualifying for the Rugby World Cup later this year. Mm-hmm. But certainly have sights set on 2027 in Australia and then here in 2031. Is making those squads on your list of goals? And have you had any conversations with the, with the men's Eagles staff? Uh, yeah, making those teams is definitely at the top of my list as far as a goal, you know. Representing my country definitely been a dream since I was a kid. Uh, I got to take it one day at a time. I'm 23 years old, you know, a lot of experience, um, in that player pool. Uh, so just continuing to, you know, perform, uh, getting better, learning from guys who have been capped before, you know, learning from coaches that tell me what I need to do, um, in order to, you know, have a chance of, you know, making the squad. Um, but yeah, absolutely a thousand percent um on my mind all the time <laughs> so sam we'll give you one more question we'll let you go um looking at maybe the u.s eagles usa eagles throughout the years um is there somebody out there that you've just loved watching play i mean you know nick savet is a lock or retired cam dolan uh you know getting up there in age as well but as, if you had a poster of somebody from the eagles squad on your dorm room wall you know who would it have been it's uh and, and there is a scrum half slash wing uh, listening in right now, too, if you want to make yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Nate, <laughs> Nate's a really good player. I'll, I'll give him that. Uh, you know, as a lock, you know, lot, not a lot I can relate to as far as, you know, his speed and agility goes. Uh, I would – I'm going to have to do this for um, the Cowboys. I'm going to have to go with uh, mm. Mike McDonald, Coach Mack. Oh, nice. He's the big man. Mm. He's uh, – one of the most capped Eagles ever. He was my forwards coach for four years at Cal. Um, if you watch his highlights, I mean, the guy's a bowling ball. And, uh, so I'm going to have to give it to Big Mike, uh, Coach Mack. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Bill, Bill, yeah, go ahead. Bill I, got one, I got one more question for, um, for Sam here. Yep. So, Sam, next weekend, Cal is in the D1A championship Ooh. taking on Navy in a rematch from an earlier season match – you got to tell us who's going to win this one. I think Cal is going to win. Yeah, twenty. <laughs> I think they'll put. I think they'll win by like two. I think it'll be a really close game, um, down to the very last minute. But I think Cal's going to take it one hundred percent. That's odd. I didn't think you'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who would have thought? Yeah, no, no bias at all. You know, none of that. You know. All right. Um, hey, Sam, man, thank you so much for joining us, uh, you know, and, and sparing some time for us for the show. Um, it, it's been great talking to you. Good luck the rest of the season with Dallas and hope to see you in a USA uniform soon. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. It was a, it was a pleasure. Got it, man. Cheers. Cheers. <clears throat> All right. Great first half an hour with our, our first half guest from the Dallas Jackal, Sam Gola. Um, excellent talk from the rookie, uh, potential Rookie of the Year nominee here. I know it's only halfway through the season, but um, he's definitely listed it in that category. Um, and I, I think, Fitzy, I think you made a ran some bets maybe through Vegas. That might happen. I don't know if you did that. <laughs> Shh, don't, don't tell anybody. Is that allowed? <laughs> but with that said, I think we got to get right next to the next our next guest. Um, joining us now, now from the west, the left coast of the United States, is San Diego Legion, the Eagle number 491, Nate Augsburger. Nate, how are you? Yeah, doing good, Bill. Doing good, man. Uh, beautiful, beautiful day over here in Southern California, so can't complain. Yeah, it, you get a few of those over there, don't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we, had, uh, we, had a, we had Will Wahooli on the show a while back, and he just said uh, when he was deciding to come to MLR, he looked at his, his wife or girlfriend at the time and said, where should I play? He says, where is there a beach and sun? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and there was and no, no one Miami takes yet. More advantage of it than than Will, I must say. No <laughs> one's more touristy in San Diego than uh, Will and Molly. But yeah, yeah, I've been seeing their posts. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he just needs to pick up um, surfing or something. I think uh, yeah. uh, Marcy uh, mentioned. I mentioned uh, the sharks out there. He says, "Listen, I'm trying to get in the water, Bill. Don't let me get out of the water." <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
So, Nate, let's get right into it. Um, dude, you're having quite the year so far. Um, I'm going to list off some stats here. Um, second in the league with meters gained um, behind Seawolves, Duncan Matthews. Uh, 44 points scored, 10th in the league, okay? But I, I think, you know, Will's ahead of you with 51. But I think Will and the others in that top list probably get most of their points in the T, so they don't count. Um, eight mm-hmm. tries, dude. First in the league tie with Balakana and Reichert of Seattle. And you're a young 33 years old. What's your secret? <laughs> I don't know. I guess, uh, you know, the, the cliche is hard work pays off. But I, I'm just one of those guys, you know, the last couple of years I've had a had a few injuries that set me back in the MLR. And, uh, yeah, I mean, every time I, I was sidelined or any time I have a setback or just whenever I, I try and stay process focused. So, um, you know, to me, I'm just, I'm just doing what I normally do. I'm, I'm trying to be the best player I can be. And, uh, we, we've got a great thing going on in San Diego. We've been playing some awesome rugby. So, uh, that that also helps um, with the way that the teams are performing and some of the guys that I get to chuck the ball around with uh, definitely makes a difference as well. Nate, as Bill mentioned at the top, you're on the short list for, for player of the year. It's, yeah, it's only halfway through the season, but is this something that even crosses your mind or are you just too dialed into the now at the moment? Um, I mean, you, you definitely hear it. You I, you know, I've heard that, that, that I'm on that list and, you know, I'm humbled by it, but yeah, I think it's more of a, uh, there's a lot of season left. There's a lot of games to be played. Um, I'd be a fool to get too tied up in, into some of that stuff, into the stats, into where we stand. And, um, yeah, just got to be way more interested in how I can make my team better and how I can make sure that, uh, the Legion are, are performing and, and keeping our standards and staying and playing the way that we want to play. Yeah, I think the biggest thing for, for MLR fans is noticing the, the position switch, right? Of course, you played a, on the wing for the men's Eagles before, but is it fair to say maybe rejuvenated almost in a way, switching from scrum half to, to wing, or has it been an easy switch to, to make that transition? Um, I mean, I've always, you know, they're two totally different positions, and they kind of have their own uh, different focus points, like in the way that you're you're perceived on the field with how you're playing them. But I think the the funny part for me was um, we were scrimmaging down in Chula Vista before the season, and we were playing up against Utah. And I had started the first 20 minutes at scrum half. Um, Utah was was up for the battle. It was probably a stop and start sticky like first 20 minutes, you know, as you would expect for a, for a first hit out. Um, but we played four 20 minute periods and I went in at the third period and I had to go in at wing. And I think I had two try assists and two line breaks during that scrimmage. And so it was just, and <laughs> two of them were off Ma. So Ma <laughs> just like put me in the holes. Um, and yeah, just kind of from that moment, I think uh, it opened our head coaches, Danny's eyes to it. You know, I, I, he'd be honest and first say that he's always looked at me as a, as a scrum half and probably even wondered why I wasn't playing more scrum half with the Eagles. But um, since things have gone the way that they have, he's just, you know, totally kind of, as he would say, ate his words. And um, he's just been enjoying having me out there on the wing and uh, contributing from, from the edge. So Nice. Uh, listeners, just real quick, I, I meant to say earlier, um, if you're not doing so already, please follow Eagles Overseas and Rugby Morning on Twitter and Instagram for updates on these shows, and you find out who our next guest is and all, that, and also news on MLR, USA Rugby College, Rugby, et cetera. Do that. Also, uh, we'd love to have you come up here and ask questions. You can do that by requesting on the bottom left of the app. If you're listening on YouTube Live or Facebook Live, go ahead and, and drop your your, drop your question to the chats here or whatever the kids say these days, and we'll get your question up here as soon as possible. And I know Nate would love to ask the questions. Uh, we do have Nate Oxberger from San Diego Legion and USA Rugby. Um, I, I'm going to call you a legend already. Just That's just what I do. Uh, <laughs> Appreciate it, Bill. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, and with that said, let's get uh, John Trevor. How are you doing, John? Hey, I'm doing well, Bill. How are you? Good. Hey, uh, Nate, just wanted to uh, ask you one thing. Um, Been a fan of yours for a minute now, and uh, you've been killing it with San Diego and the Eagles. uh, But 
I'm also a big Damian McKenzie fan, so it kind of <laughs> broke my heart a little bit when you stepped and did him dirty <laughs> like that uh, <laughs> when you played the All Blacks. So, uh, oh, nice. yeah, did, uh, did D-Mac say anything to you after the game or anything? That was just – but, yeah, anyway, best of luck with the rest of the season. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I think uh, – didn't actually have too many interactions or, or anything too crazy with the ABs after like, you know, looked him in the eye, shook his hand. It, it, it was all play on. And I think even he, he mentioned in a press conference that, you know, he had got, he had got done on that play. Um, so those, those guys are always usually, they're usually pretty humble, humble dudes. And uh, yeah, it was honestly a fun moment. And actually, uh, Damian McKenzie was playing for the Maori All Blacks back in the fall of 2016 when the USA Eagle when we played them and I was starting at nine and uh, I already I it wasn't a 50-22 back then but damn it it should have been because I put one uh, down 50-22 <laughs> into the corner uh, right in front of him kind of wheeled one over uh, from the base at nine so I always had like a little feather in my cap from from that moment you know playing against those guys but. Great guys, hum- humble guys, really, really uh, cool dudes after a game, obviously, especially when they they perform the way they did. You know, they got no reason to be uh, sour apples. No, that was, a, that was a great question. And, Nate, I got to piggyback off that. And we've asked you this question before when you've, we've come on the show, but I'm pretty sure, pretty certain we've asked you this question, but we have to ask it again. Just how did it feel to score that first USA try against New Zealand? Kind of walk us through just – maybe how the play unfolded and then your just emotions after it. Well, yeah, I mean, outside of looking up and seeing big Nate Brinkley right in front of my face. And, uh, <laughs> and also, also, you know, you take in so much information. I think by the time that I was free in an open space, I was probably in my, well, you know, my flow state, that was probably my natural habitat there. So I think everything, everything after that kind of came naturally once I got into that, that position, um, and, uh, yeah, going into that game, you know, I had a little bit of a, a calf tweak and things weren't necessarily a, a easy week for us uh, in the Eagles. And, and individually, it was even tougher because I had to sit out of a couple trainings and I just knew knew I wanted to make the most out of the opportunity. So um, I spent a lot of time during that week uh, just, just praying, uh, just trying to be grateful for you know, my teammates, the position we're in. And uh, that day I just wanted to glorify God and leave it all out in the field. And I was really fortunate. So by the time that I ended up scoring that try, I, I was on my knees and I just wanted to make sure that, you know, anyone who knew knew who I was or if there are any believers in the building that, that they knew that, you know, God had kind of guided me right into this opportunity and it's something – you know, being an American kid growing up, we, we literally, you know, before MLR, we were training with our club teams and we're thinking about what it's going to take to go up against a team like Ireland or the All Blacks or those tier one nations. You kind of, you have to, you have to put yourself in that place where you're willing to go a bit further because you know, the opposition is actually going to be a lot higher. So um, to to get out against the ABs and, and score a try was great. Um, and it, it was a, a great moment for my career. Nate, okay, let's go on to our next listener. Let's get Corey up here from – I love his uh, his handle, Beer, Beer, Beer. Let's go. What's up, Corey? Hi, how's it going? Hey, Nate. Um, I was a fan of your old uh, podcast that you had. It was uh, nice to have the player's perspective. Just wondering if you have any plans to bring that back or any collaborations with the other podcaster in San Diego, Corbs. Oh man, I appreciate I appreciate you saying that. First off, yeah, the Quick Tap Quick Tap Rugby Podcast. I really enjoyed doing it as well, and um, I think you know something like like that, like speaking or you know commentating or or something could be could be life after rugby, or at least a way to keep around the game when I'm done. So I do look forward to seeing what kind of opportunities come up. Um, I don't have any plans in the near future. The the last thing that I did was do the Scrum Diego podcast with Corbs, which, you know, he's he's just on another level. He just smashes everything that he touches. So, um, but uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to do do some of that stuff, and I'd love to be be out there promoting the game, and you know, just try try and be myself out there and, and talk about rugby as, as an American kid, you know, American guy. 
Man, Corey, do you go into McDonald's and tell them how good Burger King burgers are? <laughs> Sorry, messing. Thank you. <laughs> uh, no, that was that was a real good podcast. I I, I agree with him. That would be uh, be awesome to hear that again. Uh, but uh, with that said, let's go to uh, let's go to Stephen. Man, how are you? Hey guys, how are you? Nate good. Dog, big fan. Scuba. What's up, my boy? Uh, What's up, bro? Yeah, I just I popped in, so I might be late. Um, I just my question for you is uh, how have you seen the MLR, uh, I guess, grow and develop since the beginning? I mean, obviously, you were a part of the pro rugby before the MLR, and um, so you've been in the 15s domestic scene for a long time now. Just be curious from an outsider looking in to to understand just how how it's grown and, and the biggest parts in that, I guess, that you've seen through the years. Uh, I think if I could highlight a few of the parts, one, I think I think the fitness and, and all-around commitment uh, for each franchise is a lot better. You know, like the first, first couple of years, it's like the league's establishing themselves and uh, you get all different kinds of characters, um, not only from America, but around the world that were – in this competition and testing it out and seeing what it's about. And I think over the last two or three years, some of the rugby that's been played is, has been an obvious level up and it's just attracted more and more people who uh, want to be a part of it. You know, one of my favorite things, Steve, that, that tends to happen is uh, you maybe get guys from overseas who, uh, you know, have played a lot of, have a lot of rugby experience in other places and, it's always it's always humbling when you get some of those guys to come over and they see how committed uh, some of the American players can be knowing that we're not necessarily getting paid the same financial. Uh, we don't have the same type of contracts that they may have in the top leagues and, and whatnot overseas. And so it's always it's always uh, it's always nice to be seeing guys just really grateful for the opportunity to come over here and they really give it their best effort. And so I think, I think the league as a whole has gotten more and more guys like that to come around and you can just tell because it shows on the field. And like I said, fitness and how hard guys are willing to work for one another in their, in their teams. And then the level of play just, just goes up, you know, and uh, you know, many blessings to all the guys that were there in year one. Um, but this league's outgrown some of those guys. And uh, so it's a real, tip of the cap to guys who have been able to stick around um, and continue to play in this league while it's just gotten better and better and has more, has more foreign influence, uh, better quality players uh, coming in. Sweet. Thanks, bro. Best winger in the league, ladies and gents. Yeah. Yep. Thanks, Stevie. Good luck. Good luck in the upcoming tournaments, bro. Well, Nate, since it's, if we still have Steven on, Nate, give us the quick, and I'm sure Stephen is loving the seventh circuit, but please give Stephen the, the elevator pitch on why he should join MLR after he's done playing sevens. <laughs> uh, Steve, you have to join MLR after you play sevens because you, you, you'd fit right in, my, my brother. You would just be right in there. You know, Steve was actually, me and Steve were both uh, dabbling in 2016 um, under John Mitchell with the USA 15s. Mm. Um, me and Steve were both actually going out for scrum half. So Steve, <laughs> to those who might not know, he's actually a pretty good little scrum half. He's got all the skill in the world. And I have no doubt you could come in and, and do what I'm doing, carve up at nine or wing or where, wherever you put your mind to. So he, he, he should definitely be doing it because it's always, it's always good for the league to have, uh, you know, we have guys like Danny and Danny Barrett and Matai and a lot of the sevens boys that have come and crossed over and, I, I think it's just great for the league, you know, plus those guys have been training and playing in a high enough environment where, you know, they can, they can make the crossover and they can, they can contribute to this league, uh, even though the, the skill level and everything continues to go up. So I, I have zero doubt, Stevie, you'd be all over it, man. Much appreciated, bro. Uh, yeah, learned a lot from Nate Dog back in 2016, just a professionalism of how to handle a position and, um, you know, lead a group, which is what nines do. And, uh, you know, Nate Dog, whether he's on the wing or, or at nine, he's, he's leading from the front and uh, inspiring the boys around him. So, you know, how, only high praises for Nate. We go back a long ways. Uh, loved every minute of getting to play with you and uh, learn from you while I was younger. So 
you know, this is the man right here. And uh, in terms of me playing MLR, some someday, someday, my friend, will we reunite on the field? Yes. I look forward to it, man. I look forward to it. It's a two-way street, brother. Appreciate what you're doing, man. Keep killing it. Thanks, Steve. Good luck on the next uh, seven stop, too. We're looking forward to seeing that. All right. Thanks. Nice, buddy. All right, Nate, let's let's jump back a second here. We got another 10 minutes, 11 minutes with you. So let's jump back a second. Let's talk a little more San Diego Legion. And we definitely want to talk USA Rugby a little more, too. Uh, but but so let's go a little more recent. Let's talk about your, your victory over Dallas last week, our first half against the team. Close one. You know, Dallas seems to be gaining ground and growing as a team. Uh, you came off the bench for that one. But let's talk about what it took to pull away in that victory. I mean, and were you surprised at all at the effort that Dallas gave you? You know, I, I was I was surprised because I thought I thought Dallas was their fitness. It just felt like as the game went, you know, we're attacking, we're keeping ball, and they just still got bodies on feet. Uh, they're moving all around the pitch. So I I was actually pretty impressed with the growth that they've had over the last, you know, however many or so weeks. Um, they probably probably could have a few more wins than than what they have, you know, but that's franchise stuff that's team stuff you, mm -hmm. you you figure that out eventually um especially if you're playing the way that those guys are playing so i think uh i think more so than any, anything maybe maybe dallas lost it there at the end even though we were up by two points before our last kickoff uh we gotten two yellow cards down that mm -hmm. that last 20 minute stretch and almost kind of a similar tune to uh when we played houston away uh round three we got two yellow cards and we ended up losing a match. So, you know, we we're pretty fortunate to come away with a victory anyways on the road at Dallas, but they're, they, they're definitely playing a level up from what they were early on in the season. And you could tell, uh, you could tell they're fit, man, they're fit. They're mm -hmm. running around, they're getting around the field. So, you know, that's a huge strength for, for any team. If you can play, play quick, play fast. Yeah. And it's good to see that Dallas is, is definitely more competitive, but Look, the Legion, you guys are 8-1, high-scoring team in MLR right now. A lot of people pick the Legion to have to go pretty far this year. And not to toot my own horn, but back in January, I predicted the San Diego Legion versus New England Rejects final. <laughs> at the time, at the time, I picked New England to win it. So please explain to me right now how wrong <laughs> I will be and explain to me why San Diego will win the MLR Shield. Hey, I'm not a – I'm not – you know, I can't read the future, John. I can't read the future. But um, no, I think if we were to play New England again, they're definitely going to be a different animal from when we played them uh, week two. You know, got a lot of respect for the some of the players uh, at New England. Um, it looks like they're building their squad even more so, right? A couple guys finishing up other seasons and mm -hmm. going to be returning with that team. So, you know, they're, they're obviously the beast of the East. Uh, they're a really strong team. And, uh, yeah, couldn't, couldn't ask for a better opposition. If you're going to be in a final, if you're going to be in a playoff with, with another team, I mean, you, you want to go up against the best and that's gotta be the mindset for us. And if it, if it happens to be new England, then, uh, we know, we know it's real when we come out, you, you know, if we come out victorious, we know that it's real, that, that we deserve to have it. So, but nothing but respect for new England. They're, they're turning it on and, really starting to show uh, similar signs of who they were last year playing mm -hmm. good rugby. So the MLR final this year is going to be played uh, in Chicago, first time in a, in a neutral venue outside of last year, uh, which was a little bit different. But um, in years past, it would have been played at what the, the highest seed. So San Diego were to go all the way. It would be played at Snapdragon Stadium, brand new stadium there, San Diego State. I mean, it looks great on TV and that record crowd that you guys had at your home opener, set an MLR record. All that aside, it's got to feel better on the body not to be tackled atop a cement parking garage with, yeah. with a thin layer of fake grass like last year, right? <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I always say, like, um, you know, a lot of people ask questions about, oh, Snapdragon and what it's like. And I'm just like, you know, everybody in San Diego who supported the Legion, fans, everybody in the community, but also the players, like we, we deserve Snapdragon. You know, we, we really do. We deserve the place 
Um, that is awesome. You know, especially coming from Torero, which was also just a, a great place to play, a place where uh, away teams show up and they go, I want to play my best game. And, um, you know, Snapdragon is that for us. And, and it's just, yeah, man, it's, it's awesome. It's definitely a difference maker. I wish the final could be there. Um, as a Midwest boy, you know, if the finals in Chicago, I'm not going to bat an eye on it, you know, cause I'll be able to get some, uh, get some people, some people to that game that maybe wouldn't make it to the San Diego game, uh, in full force. But, um, Snapdragon is really as, as special as it probably looks on, on the telly. All right, all right, Nate, Nate, let's jump forward to Eagle stuff now. Okay. we got another five minutes with you. So let's. Which is uh, you know, we're going to run through this. <laughs> uh, Scott Lawrence, new interim head coach, seems to be a change in focus with him now. Uh, have you had many discussions with maybe Scott or anyone else in the staff? And also, I don't know, can we expect to see you maybe in the autumn? Uh, I'd love to. I mean, I'll continue to put my hand up uh, for the Eagles um, as long as I'm competing. And if I'm good enough to be there, then I want then I want to be there. Um, so around selections and stuff, yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep trying to, you know, make make someone take my spot and mm -hmm. and uh, otherwise continue to just be involved. But um, Scott, I've, I've been I've been in touch with Scott. Uh, I'll just tell you, you know, Scott is a, a different different individual, and uh, the way that he's locked in and set in on on this team. I mean, the guy has done every different type of contribution to American rugby from playing uh, to coaching and now obviously getting to be in the head seat for USA. Like I'm super pumped for him because I know that this means everything to him. And usually when you get a guy that's, that's that serious about it and that, that desperate to, to make an impact, you, you're going to get someone who's committed that can do something pretty special. So I, I back Scott for all those reasons, man. I, I look forward to what he's uh, what he's cooking up for the Eagles, and I think it's definitely one of those where we're going to have to turn a page here from some tough scars, some tough wounds, and that's going to take a special person to get us to a right. place where we can heal from all that and play our best rugby. And uh, yeah, like I said, if, if if Scott's if this has been his dream job for 25 years and he's finally getting the opportunity, I'm freaking excited uh, to join him. Oh, sorry, Nate. Uh, I think I was muted there for a second. Uh, you know, you, you, you talk about the longevity in the sport, and we, we've seen some players who have played deeper into their 30s, right? Even some guys in their 40s, right? Your teammate, Manan, who was 40. Johnny Sexton's, what, 37, 38, playing at a, a World Cup in, in, in a few months here. But what, what changes do you have to make in order to kind of keep playing deep into your 30s. You're only 33 years old. So when Rugby World Cup 27 comes around, you're 37. I mean, there's a chance you could still be playing. What, what changes do you have to make in order to keep playing at such a high level? Uh, there, I, my favorite part about rugby is that it, it is one of those sports that although it's physically, uh, physically demanding, it's a very mental game and it takes a lot of, a lot of skill skills that you may not even master in, in your career, let alone a lifetime. Um, so it's kind of one of those, you get, you get better with age and you start to read the game uh, clearer and clearer and you're able to still hang with all these, all these dudes who are just like in their prime or whatever, but you're able to make the right decisions and it, and it keeps you on the field, you know, it keeps your, your value. But as, as far as what you proactively have to do, like, you know, Ma's the first guy in the gym every morning. He's going to be there either stretching, lifting weights, uh, doing extra fitness. He's, he's doing something. And like me and him always talk about, and, and I know I'll be this kind of guy for the rest of my life is like, I got to move. Like I, I don't take two days off where I don't move and get out and do something because it's actually counterproductive for my body. Like, just little, little things settle in. It becomes, you know, sometimes it can become harder to get back up after those couple of days of rest. So by all means, you need rest and you need to do it at the right times. But like we're, we're in the middle of the season and we're locked in and, you know, I'm, I'm spending time moving my body and making sure that I'm, I'm putting those deposits in all the time because I want to feel 
like I can go out there and do it every single day. So it's, it's a, you know, and obviously I could break it down nutrition, hydration, all that stuff, but we know all that stuff matters. But to me, it's, it's keeping your body moving and keeping yourself, uh, you know, lubricated and ready to rumble that, you know, that's it <laughs> essentially. So, uh, uh, Nate, I'm going to wrap it up here. I want to ask you a question about one of your San Diego and USA teammates, uh, Ryan Mattias. Uh, he's joined us a couple of times, and I think sometimes he's even, you know, while in a drive through at an In-N-Out burger ordering a, you know, a burger animal style or something. Um, <laughs> are you ever tired of his extreme love for the game? <laughs> oh, man. There's no, there's no bigger heart for, yeah. for rugby and for American rugby than Ryan Mattias. And I'll just say a funny thing on the In-N-Out comment is that he'd never eat there. <laughs> he's like a total nutrition, like – yeah. He's got boxes that he ticks in his diet that like in and out is just like a trip, a trip to the wrong, wrong place. If you know what I mean, if he puts that stuff in them, it's just like, oh God. <laughs> he's so, he is so against it, man. But, um, as far as having a passion and uh, like a genuine love, like, you know, we talk about it in, in team environments all the time. Like it's, it's really special when you've got guys that can play the same position and like help the other guys out or like go out of their way for their teammates. And like Ryan is genuinely that dude just to everybody in the rugby community period. You know, he's just going to go out of his way for people. He's going to, you know, mm -hmm. give you his words. He's going to listen to you. He's going to try and help you young guys, especially. Um, he has such a powerful impact on. So, you know, Ryan Mattias is, is really one in a million <laughs> And I'm just super lucky that I still get to play rugby with him every day and, yeah, just get smashed by his, his extreme love for the game. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Good Absolutely. way to put it. Absolutely. Nate, I've got one more question for you here. This is a little off the wall here. I'm going to read a list of names. I need you to tell me what they all have in common, okay? Okay. <laughs> Jesse the Body Ventura. Okay. Prince. The author F. Scott Fitzgerald, the actor Josh Harnett, and Nate Osberger. Minnesota natives. There you go. Oh, go that was I easy. Used to bike, I used to bike by uh, Josh Harnett's uh, very nice mansion uh, around, a, around a lake, a, a local uh, South Minneapolis lake. So, and then Prince, obviously, you know, everybody yeah. knows Prince. So, you know, we got pride, we got pride in our Minnesota native. So <laughs> you got me there. You would have, you would have got me wrong. Whoever Arthur is, uh, you know, sorry, bro. I didn't know about you, but everybody else, I was, <laughs> everybody else, I was in. <laughs> uh, Governor Ventura. Uh, <laughs> Governor Ventura, man. Uh, Nate, man. Um, been a blast talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, uh, we, let's do it again sometime. Good luck the rest of the season with San Diego, and we do really hope to see you in a USA uniform again. Right on, right on. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me on. And, you know, if Peter's listening, hey, uh, thinking of Ruben, can't wait to see him out there with the Cheetahs. And, uh, yeah, man, all the best to him. Absolutely. All right, buddy. We'll talk again soon. All right. See you guys. Bye-bye. And thank you all for listening in tonight. Uh, great show with Sam Gallo from Dallas Jackals. And we just finished up with San Diego Legion and USA Eagle, Nate Augsburger. Lots of great input from these two, and um, it's just been a great show. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, tune into the podcast if you missed it and missed the first half. It'll be out possibly the next day or two. Uh, for John Fitzpatrick of Rugby Morning, I am Bill Baker of Eagles Overseas. Have a great night. Thank you. <laughs>